What's going on guys? It's Jimmy here and welcome to our daily show where we discuss the fourth stimulus check updates, the two new upcoming packages, the physical infrastructure package known as the American Jobs Plan and the next stimulus package known as the American Families Plan, as well as what is going on in the world today. First up, I got some urgent time sensitive information that might affect millions of people regarding uh, monthly checks coming out as well as we're going to talk about what Vice President Kamala Harris just did which <laughs> a lot of people were actually shocked about as well as the next stimulus check the next stimulus package and the infrastructure package the latest details on that so if you're new to the channel make sure to subscribe down below or if you haven't yet uh, it's completely free to do so this way you won't miss out on new uh, episodes remember new videos come out uh, every day here on this channel at 10 a.m 3 p.m and 8 p.m eastern standard time also if you can hit the like button for us it really helps out our channel Okay, first up, some urgent time sensitive information regarding the monthly checks that are going to start going out to children on July 15th. $250 to $300 per month per child. This is already passed, but only for one year. This is passed from the third stimulus check package. And uh, the, the White House says that the payments could be permanent or at least extended until 2025 in the fourth stimulus check package, the American Families plan that they're negotiating on right now. I'll get into some information on that here uh, in a minute of what the latest details are on the next stimulus package and the next infrastructure package. But these monthly payments are going to start on July 15th of $250 per month for children ages 6 through 17 and $300 per month for children under the age of 6. These are called the child tax credits, and I, these are a lot of these are confusing to a lot of people. Um, they are passed from the third stimulus check package. Stimulus checks themselves are actually advanced refundable tax credits, um, but these child tax credits have been going on since 1998, I believe it is. Um, but they've been increasing, and the Democrats that have passed the third stimulus check package completely on their own increased them to $3,000 for children ages 6 through 17 and $3,600 for children under the age of 6. And I also should mention that children or maybe adults that are 18 through 24 um, that are still in college can also get a one-time $500 stimulus check from this provision. Okay, so the third stimulus check, they increased it. Uh, used to be $2,000 when former President Donald Trump increased it from $1,000 back in 2017 from the Trump tax cuts. Okay, now it's increased to $3,3600. The IRS is going to start paying these out in monthly payments starting on July 15th. $250 per month for children ages 6 to 17, $300 per month for children under the age of 6. Uh, for the rest of the year, basically six payments for the rest of the second half of the year. The first half of the year, you're going to get on your tax returns, okay, from twenty your 2021 tax returns when you file them next year. Um, whether you opt out of the payments, which I'll get to here in a second, regardless, you're going to get half of the money up for, uh, as a one lump sum when you do your 2021 tax returns. So like almost a year from now, like nine or 10 months from now, you'll be getting that additional $1,500 to $1,800. However, um, if you want to opt out of all the monthly payments, which I don't really recommend, I rec because you're giving the IRS an interest-free loan and you're telling the IRS that you don't want to get this money now, you want to basically get it when you file your tax returns next year and you get you actually get your refund back, which is like April or May of next year. Um, but regardless, some people want to opt out of these monthly checks for the rest of the year and get the full $3,000 to $3,600 next year, um, almost a year from now. Well, there's a deadline for that. And the deadline is June 28th. If you want to opt out of these uh, monthly payments and just get it all as a one lump sum. And this would probably up to out for future years. If they end up passing this, you would you would only get it at tax return. So you'd be waiting the whole year instead of getting monthly payments throughout the whole year. Um, you would opt out of those. Okay. So this is for June 28th. So less than three days from now, you have like two days to opt out of these payments. Okay. So I'm going to put these two links down below. Number one is if you are a non-filer, you do not file tax returns. Um, they have a non-filer tool for the child tax credits, these monthly payments. Um, if you are not normally required to file a 2020 tax return and you didn't file one, you can use this non-filer tool right here 
on the IRS's website. I will put a link to this website down below in the description of this video, as well as this video or this uh, link. If you're on a mobile phone, you may have to click the down arrow next to the title of this video to find the description uh, for these. The other website here is to opt out of the un. Um, the advanced payments. Actually, you can do the non-filers here too. Um, so I, maybe I'll just put this link here, this this particular IRS, this is directly on irs.gov. You can unenroll from advanced payments and enter your information for non-filers. There's actually another page, I'll have to find it. Okay, I just found it real quick and paused the video for you. This is the Advanced Child Tax Credit Eligibility Assistant. So if you're not sure if you're gonna be eligible, if you wanna check your eligibility, if you maybe didn't get the letter in, um, in, uh, in the mail from the IRS regarding these payments, you can check your eligibility. So I'll put this link down below in the description, as well as the link to unenroll from the advanced payments and the non-filer tool. So if you uh, make less income, remember you do not need any income at all to get these monthly child tax credits. 65 million children are gonna start getting these monthly payments. You do not need any, a single dollar of earned income. They changed that in the third stimulus check package. So you can have not a single dollar of earned income and still get these monthly payments which is pretty awesome. As you know, I keep you up to date on all the different stimulus items, the state, city, county stimulus checks, Social Security raises, the negotiations over the fourth stimulus check uh, that would most likely be for anybody that qualified for the third stimulus check. Uh, I keep you up to date on all these different stimulus provisions. So don't worry if you don't qualify, if you're not one of the 65 million um, adults with children, then don't worry about it. I will cover all the additional stimulus uh, programs and provisions on this channel as well. Also, finally, finally, Vice President Kamala Harris has made her first visit to the U.S.-Mexico border as vice president, as she has been dubbed in charge of the uh, border crisis, but yet has not visited uh, the border. And I think it was around 90 days, so three months since she was put in charge of the border. She did not visit the border at all. And amid huge criticism. She has finally visited the border today. As you can see here, the vice president toured the El Paso, Texas Central Processing Center, a U.S. Customs and Border Protection facility, and spoke with five young girls from Central America while there. She participated in a walking tour and attended an operational briefing. Later on in the day, she will hold a conversation with advocates from the faith-based NGOs, shelter, and legal services provider. At the conclusion of her trip, she'll take questions from the press. That will be interesting. She says, quote, we are here today to address and to talk about what has brought people to the U.S. border and again to continue to address the root causes that cause people to leave and often flee their home and their country. Now, Vice President Kamala Harris' office or her aides have um, amid criticism, she's been getting huge criticism, even from a lot of Democrats, because she's been put in charge of the border, but hasn't even visited the border in 90 days, three months. Um, their office, her office has come out this week and said that she's not actually in charge of the actual border crisis. She's only in charge of the border problems that would cause people to go to the border. Yeah, I'm, it sounds kind of crazy. Listen to this. You'll remember a few months ago when President Biden tasked Vice President Harris with leading diplomatic efforts with Central American countries uh, to stem the flow of migrants to the United States. But in recent weeks, CNN has learned that the vice president's staff has been working to make clear that her role is focused solely on the root issues of migration, not managing the surge at the southern border. That's a stickier issue. CNN's Natasha Bertrand is in Washington. She's been covering this. And Natasha, it's interesting because that has been the impression that this is part of her portfolio as mm -hmm. vice president, right? The broader issue at the southern border doesn't appear she or her team is genuinely interested in that. Yeah, Jim. So when the president announced back in March that the vice president was going to be taking on this new portfolio, there was a lot of confusion about what her role would actually be, what the parameters of her role would be. Was it going to be, uh, you know, focusing narrowly on the border and trying to stem uh, crossings of the border and border conditions? Or was it going to be focused more on the root causes of migration, of why people were actually being driven to the border? Um, what we know now is that it is the latter, and that is something that the vice president and her staff 
staff have wanted to make extremely clear. Because following that announcement by President Biden, there was some confusion that Republicans in, uh, in particular seized upon to make Kamala Harris kind of the scapegoat for everything that was going on at the border at the time. If you'll remember, there was a record number of crossings at the border that was creating kind of a political uh, problem for the Biden administration. There was that whole debate over whether to call it a crisis, um, if you'll remember. So the president, the vice president did not the vice president's team, I should say, did not want her to get saddled with all of this political, politically fraught uh, uh, information, uh, this politically fraught situation. And so they've sought to make it very clear, both internally and publicly, that she is focused on diplomacy and efforts in the Northern Triangle to really address the root causes here of migration. So, yeah, I'm a little confused, as you probably are as well. I don't consider myself a Democrat or a Republican. I consider myself a realist. And the real point of view is the, the the main question is there. Well, if if Vice President Kamala Harris isn't actually in charge of the border, who is? <laughs> yeah, you let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Is there nobody in charge of the border? Uh, you know, and this comes amid Texas Governor Greg Abbott is going to be building the wall himself uh, on Texas land. They're going to be spending millions of, possibly even billions of dollars to finish the wall in Texas themselves. The Texas border wall is about half of the entire border of the United States. And yeah, it's, uh, now remember, in all fairness, because again, I look at this as a realist, the border crisis has been going on for decades. And in fact, it's actually been increasing throughout the years. Of course, we did have a big spike when President Biden came in. And it's largely largely because of what the Guatemalan president um, and the, as well as the, the Mexico president, um, they have said that, as you can see here, many migrants believe that the, quote, doors are open to the United States following the election of President Biden and their more lenient um, immigration policy than former President Donald Trump. So a lot of migrants literally just think that they're allowed to come into the U.S., and um, that's what a lot of them are doing. Now, as a counterpoint, well, AOC said this in response to Vice President Kamala Harris's statement. I want to be clear to folks in this region who are thinking about making that dangerous trek to the United States-Mexico border. Do not come. Do not come. The United States will continue to enforce our laws and secure our border. There are legal methods by which migration can and should occur. But we, as one of our priorities, will discourage illegal migration. And I believe if you come to our border, you will be turned back. So let's discourage our friends, our neighbors, our family members from embarking on what is otherwise an extremely dangerous journey. Now, AOC says in response to this, this is disappointing to see. This is a, 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 a far left Democratic counterpoint. First, seeking asylum at the U.S. border is a 100 percent legal method of arrival, says uh, AOC. Again, let me repeat that. She says, AOC says, seeking asylum at any U.S. border is a 100% legal method of arrival. Second, the U.S. spent decades contributing to the regime change and destabilization in Latin America. We can't help set someone's house on fire and then blame them for fleeing. Let me know your thoughts on this down below in the comments. This is one of the major issues pressing our country um, as we have hundreds of thousands of people that are being caught almost on a monthly basis trying to enter the U.S. Um, from what I would consider illegally. I mean, they're not doing paperwork. They're just coming in. But AOC says that that's actually legal for them to do. And I'm sure that could be debated in a court of law. Let me know your thoughts on that. Now on the next stimulus package and the next infrastructure package, uh, as you probably know, President Biden has agreed to a bipartisan group deal saying, quote, we have a deal. The plan is expected to increase federal spending by nearly $600 billion of the $1.2 trillion that would be spent over eight years for the physical infrastructure package. So $600 billion of it would be 
old stimulus money that's already passed that's sitting there would be used for half of this infrastructure package. And uh, the other half, $600 billion, would be new money, um, but would leave many of President Biden's economic proposals, including investment in child care and much of climate agenda, for a future bill. Now then, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi kind of shocked everybody and saying there won't be a bipartisan bill passed in the House of Representatives. She will set that bill aside and not let it go to a vote unless the Senate also approves the Democrat-only infrastructure package, which is basically the next stimulus package. It's part two of the infrastructure package. It's also known as the human infrastructure package or uh, the next stimulus package known as the American Families Plan. President Biden then backed Nancy Pelosi after she came out and said this. He almost was kind of forced to because Nancy Pelosi's in charge of the House and she can do even rogue things like we've seen Mitch McConnell, um, the former leader of the Senate from the Republican side, do against uh, former President Trump at times, including holding that $1,400 uh, stimulus check called the Cash Act that uh, former President Trump wanted, but Mitch McConnell did not. Well, President Biden has now backed Nancy Pelosi. We're not sure if they planned it together or not, but a lot of people, including uh, Mitch McConnell, the Senate Minority Leader, are wondering if by forcing this ultimatum on uh, Congress, did Biden, Pelosi, and Schumer already blow up the bipartisan infrastructure deal? Basically saying, Nancy Pelosi is saying, and now President Biden are saying, um, that they're going to pass the infrastructure package. I, I think this is how it's going to go. They're going to pass the infrastructure package in the Senate, but then the House will not vote on it yet. So it'll, it'll maybe be sent to the House and they'll just, she'll sit it there. And remember, Mitch McConnell's kind of known famous for this, right? He sent the bill to his graveyard. What that really means is you just, Never vote on it or vote on it whenever you want. You can vote on it months later if you want to. So Nancy Pelosi is saying she won't let it go to a vote. You can pass it in the Senate, but then you're going to have to also pass the next to stimulus package, the American Families Plan, which even she says will be passed through reconciliation because, well, I think everybody following along knows that no Republicans are going to vote for that. Not a single Republican voted yes for the third stimulus check package. So it's very unlikely they would vote yes for the fourth stimulus check package, which has about 20 different stimulus items they're negotiating on, Social Security increases, Medicare expansion to have additional Medicare benefits like hearing, dental, vision, hearing aids, a possible forced stimulus check, a possible monthly recurring forced stimulus check, a possible extension of the monthly checks called the child tax credits until 2025 or permanently, a possible two years of free community college for all adults that make below an income threshold, probably the same as the third stimulus check. So yeah, two years of free college would be amazing. Two years of free preschool, possible student loan debt forgiveness, possible home buyer credits of up to $25,000. Yeah, there's a lot that they're negotiating on in this bill. And I think everybody knows the Democrats are going to have to pass that through the reconciliation process, um, including Senator Joe Manchin. He's actually come out and said, I understand we're going to have to pass this through the reconciliation process. And he knows he's a big part of that because uh, you need all 50 Democratic senators to vote yes on it. That is exactly what happened in the third stimulus check package. So Senator Joe Manchin's already kind of come out and said, yeah, I understand we're going to need all 50 votes for this bill. And uh, now he knows that, the, that these bills, their fates are kind of intertwined. They've kind of been intertwined from the beginning. But we've had a kind of a lot of twists and turns in the road. Just last week, the Democrats were saying they were going to pass them together as a huge $6 trillion bill uh, through the reconciliation process. I think that would actually be harder to pass. I think it'll probably be easier to pass the physical infrastructure package, albeit a smaller bill, with Republican support, get that passed, and then get Senator Joe Manchin and everybody on board um, to pass the stimulus package, you know, and just negotiate on that only between the Democrats. And that's why anything, any of these 20 stimulus items, including the stimulus checks that so many Democrats are pushing for, over 100 different Democrats are pushing for, and in fact, a lot of them are pushing for the monthly stimulus checks. Uh, separate from the child tax credits. Those monthly checks are already passed, but only for one year. Um, there's so much Democratic support for this. It reminds me of the second stimulus check as um, 
back then we actually had a Republican Senate though and a Republican president. But the scenario reminds me of the same when um, we were leading up to the package and there was just so much support for stimulus checks and additional stimulus provisions that they couldn't deny it and they had to add them in there. And that is ultimately what happened. And then we actually got another stimulus check after that, a third stimulus check. And I remember it all throughout those months, people would say, there will never be a second stimulus check. Yeah, I'd get random people coming by on, this, on the channel, right? There'll never be a second stimulus check. And I'm thinking, well, okay, a second stimulus check just got passed. And then I'd have people saying, there'll never be a third stimulus check. And then I was like, oh, well, the third stimulus check just got passed too, by the way. Uh, now there's people saying, there'll never be a fourth stimulus check uh, passed. And I'm thinking, this is the same scenario that we went through for the second and third ones. There's hundreds of Democrats that are all like, yeah, we need more support because even if the virus was gone tomorrow, which it's not, you know, the new Delta variant is actually uh, pretty, pretty bad in some of these states, right? And a lot of people are worried about that when fall and winter comes and cooler temperatures, that that's, uh, it's like way more contagious than any of the other variants. And they think that this is going to be a huge problem. But even if the virus was gone tomorrow, Tomorrow, the economic recovery is going to take us years. So um, that's why a lot of these Democrats actually want this monthly payment plan or monthly ch uh, stimulus checks like this plan introduced into the House of Representatives that is for a one-time $2,000 stimulus check, then followed by $1,000 monthly recurring stimulus checks or monthly payments that would go into one year after the pandemic is declared over. So a bare minimum, if this bill were to be passed, of 12 monthly payments or 12 stimulus checks of $1,000. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. I'll keep you up to date on everything. Make sure to subscribe down below. It's completely free to do so. And remember these times, new videos come out every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can click this video here to watch my vid newest video about states, cities, and counties passing their own stimulus checks and stimulus programs. This top video is my newest stimulus check video. And this bottom video is President Biden's Social Security raise, my newest video on that. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks, guys, and I will see you in the next video.